too busy with your eyes for a lot of work. Okay, but I didn't want to bring it up to the front of you. <laughs> this is the, I think we're going to go out in the back. Okay. Out this out. You look so pretty. Come on out. I, I tried to it. fix the rhythm in the beginning. <laughs> You tried, but we're going to do it tomorrow, let me tell you. I think uh, Ms. Bastian's compassion and, and love for all of her students um, has really given uh, all of us a new perspective on music because otherwise it'd be, you know, just playing notes or something, but we've all really come to um, love music as it is, and thanks to Ms. Bastian, we all appreciate it a lot. I met Jane Bastian a long time ago, as we'd say, at uh, Columbia University. And uh, we were classmates, although not in the same class at, uh, at Columbia. And uh, I was uh, uh, studying um, uh, music education, and her major, of course, was piano. And uh, she had um, finished her uh, undergraduate work at Barnard College. I, as I recall, Jane had, um, she went to New Orleans and um, uh, had a job teaching at uh, um, the Women's University of Tulane, which is called Safi Nukem. Um, she attracted students immediately. She had by far the largest class of students they ever had at Tulane. They were children, they weren't uh, uh, graduate students. And it was surprising, there were so many more students in that program than there were in the graduate programs. Uh, uh, raise an eyebrow now and then, but she, she did very well for, for the, uh, that program. Uh, Jim Bastian was teaching at piano at Loyola University, and Jane was at uh, Safi Newcomb, and they had this Smizer Bastian, they called it the Smizer Bastian duo piano, they duo pianists. Actually, when I started in New Orleans, um, she wanted me to take from somebody else to start with, so I took from her assistant, which is, her name is Janet Swansea, and she's still the head of the department in New Orleans, and I took from her from probably when I was about, I don't know, five or six through the age of nine, and then, um, and then my mom taught me the group theory class, and then when we moved to San Diego, um, my mom started teaching me both just because she didn't really know anybody out here at that point and it just worked out that way. Um, we have a lot of pianos in different rooms and students were practicing at different times. Um, it felt a little like if you would walk past uh, a group of practice rooms at any college or at any music camp. Um, but again, it was sort of what we knew and it was a part of our lives. In my family, especially my husband, he calls my mom the piano teacher. <laughs> kind of like from a horror film, <laughs> the piano teacher. You know, she's been my model for a teacher. I moved back here when I was 23, and I've been, you know, kind of observing what she does off and on throughout the years. She knows so much about music, and I think sometimes people peg her as this great pedagogue who has talked about the multi-key method. Well, you know, that's great, and she's really great at that. But she, the reason that works so well is because she knows music. I didn't know. You know, it's a lot better. Uh, we went straight from basic, you know, the Bastion Piano Basics to uh, playing Sanson Concerto, you know, Greek, Shostakovich, stuff like that, you know. So, so she really walked me through, uh, we're talking a world of literature, you know. It's just a huge impact. Uh, I mean, we're talking about eight years, and this is like through adolescence. Really excellent. Always before, I never had the feeling that you were in any kind of a line down here. Mm -hmm. After you've done this, this. So you need. You know, 
Try it one more time from here. Okay. So, the thing I like about this studio is that it's very, very full. And therefore, it's really easy to control the kids. It's not huge because otherwise it's very hard in a larger studio, even in the garage, which we'll show you in a minute. So anyway, basically the students play on this piano. I sometimes sit at that piano. This is a six foot four Steinway, which I bought at a garage sale. And uh, I really liked it so much because it gives us more room at the end in order to get over to the table. Originally, we had a seven foot Steinway here, but it was just really hard to get around then. So this gives us more room, and this is where we have the theory classes, or where they come in for theory classes and sit down and do their theory. This is actually the first table that my husband and I ever had that we ever ate on many, many years ago when we first got married, and it's really served a good purpose because it's the big theory table. So anyway, there's many, many closets, nooks, and crannies. Um, we keep music and I'm not opening this door. This is the only one I won't open. <laughs> but anyway, there's lots of things in here that we use for teaching, such as extra books, games, and, and I keep track of all the stuff which I'm going to put in my scrapbook. At the end of every year, we try to put a scrapbook together uh, showing what the students have done during the year. And it's really fun because they come back and look at it later and we remember who was with whom and all this kind of thing, who was with who. Um, then these are the electronic pianos. So basically, we usually have no more than 12 people in the class. We do technique, we do ensemble, we do sight reading, all of these things at these pianos. Actually, eventually, this was our garage originally, and this is where the washer dryer was, up on this little ledge. So it really worked out quite well uh, to have this with music. We have extra chairs in there for when we need them and so on. And um, then this is our bulletin board, and this tells a lot about what goes on. Um, we have here um, recitals. Our skating party is coming up on March 18th. We always have a roller skating party uh, after we have our big certificate of merit test. Our piano recitals, anything the students have done. You can see that I have a lot of teenage students now who are going to dances, and they always bring the pictures from the dances, and that's a lot of fun to see. This. These are the prizes. This is a little grocery cart that we have. And when they have a good lesson, they get to have a prize. Now, and these are the Beanie Babies, which we uh, have the students earn at this point. And this is just a um, mixture of the ones that I happen to have at this moment. I might mention to you also that we have this chart, practice makes perfect. That isn't especially true, but it makes better. Practice makes better anyway. Everything's so cluttered in here that we don't do great big things for our classes, great big games and so on where everybody's involved. So out here is where we do this. This is our garage. You can see over here we have the piano also. So a lot of times if we're performing, we will, I will have the kids come out here and listen and this is sort of a more realistic uh, uh, situation for performing here. This is where I write when I get time. <laughs> My students have helped me do this. I'm really, really grateful. They really have done a great job. I never would have been able to get it done myself. You know, it's just easy because you can move around. We do flashcard games out here. They'll have two lines and two different teams and they will compete against each other for key signatures or notes or whatever. So I think that's about it. Okay. She really believes in giving children and, you know, adults as they grow on up pieces that are appropriate for their level, that they can play to their very best of their ability, not giving them something that's so far over their head that they can't, you know, really do the piece justice. She's really good at choosing pieces for specific people. Happy Valentine's Day. is much, much better. I really want you to just play it one more time. I okay. really do, because it's really good. Don't you like it? Yes. I really like it. This now she's really very, good. very good at selecting music for students. She has a strong belief in not teaching music that's too hard too soon. 
and in letting kids enjoy what they play. So rather than every single time they get a new piece, it has to be so much harder than the piece before. She just, she gives a lot of material across the board so that they learn to read well. And you did, or which part are you supposed to play? I'm playing supposed to be the primo. You're supposed to be the primo, okay, so try it. That's good, you know that's... She sort of tells me to like play with my right hand and then play with my left hand, start out slowly and then concentrate on hard parts until you get them familiar with and then and then after all that you, you can start doing the whole piece sort of. She always helps me with those the spots that I um, don't understand by repetition and um, by breaking it down into small chunks and by counting aloud. And then here it's one. And, and two. two. And. Yeah. and you'll see that this has to hold all the way. Mm -hmm. See how it gets one and two. Mm -hmm. And you hold that all the way over there. Okay. Then and one. one. You still should know where you are, where you're going to phrase and so on. Okay. Mm -hmm. She insisted on learning the piece in a way that it was sort of foolproof. In other words, you would learn the left hand alone and learn the right hand alone. And then when, once you put them together, you weren't sort of stumbling over fingerings and rhythms and so on. Um, it was pretty cohesive right from the start. And she would always take it at a very slow tempo from the beginning. So just the whole learning process was one where you were inputting the correct information from the very start. And not only were you incorrect, uh, inputting, as I said before, the notes and and the rhythms and so on, but really the musical details early on. And so, and then you just sort of gradually, gradually increase the tempo. And then the finished product was, I would say, you know, it had had all the right ingredients all the way through. It was like a, a good recipe and the outcome was, you know, a good product. Crescendo here. You need to make your left hand softer. Every raindrop that falls isn't the same, is the whole point. So look. Let me show you something. You need to go like this. One, and two, and three, and four, and five, and two, and three. Okay, try it. Okay. Try it. So your left hand's softer. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and left, and three, and four. The same thing. Go. A, D, C, G, F. Her theory classes prepared me in the, ac the academic aspect of my um, music major. So, you know, that also helped me. I was able to pass out of some of the theory classes, and that was really good. So she did a great job of preparing me. G, B. 35! Wow, you went down. I can't believe it, Nathan. That is fantastic. Nathan. Wang, Nathan, I can't believe you did it in 30 minutes, Can you, or 35 seconds. Wow, that was really good. 35, and if you can get it any faster, we'll erase this. Okay? Okay. Okay? So you're going to remember to bring me your picture next time. Okay. Sebastian makes it fun when you learn it in our group lessons, because we get to play games. A major. A major. A minor. A minor. G major. Tie. That's a tie. Okay. D major. E major. E major. E major. E major. E major. Sorry. F major. That's a tie. This definitely is a group experience because you get to you get to work with all of these other kids, and they're all here to help and support you along the way. Tell me if um, anybody got this also on one of the sections. They were all triads, except for like four or five yeah. four-note chords. Yeah. But every single four-note chord was a full diminished in a 4-3 inversion. Yeah. Yes. Okay, good. The, the group lessons and the theory and stuff have, first of all, I mean, that's a big part of preparing for college-level entrance from a pedagogical standpoint or whatever. She really prepares you well that way and that you have a solid basis. So you walk into a... Uh, school where you're, you're going to be a music major and you can just whiz through that first year of theory because she's already given you all that. See, this is the most right here, then less 
is right here. Oh, I never noticed that. Yeah, and then the third there. third is least. See, let's try, let's try it one more time. So that it's just coming down. One, two, three. <laughs> Like I'll get one thing kind of bad, and then she'll, and instead of just saying like I had a bad lesson, she'll just say, "Okay, you need to work on this for next week." She just says what you have to do to to get to be a professional piano player. So, um, well, she can get a little strict because when you're fooling around and like talking to people when she's talking, that's disturbing and maybe you can't be a piano teacher or a pianoist when you get bigger. So um, it depends on your childhood for your future. So. Okay, you know, it's very, very, very good. I have two suggestions that would make it sound better. Number one, number one is if you could play I mean, your chords are almost too soft now. I don't hear all the notes. I mean, I just, sometimes I hear it, but if you could play so, be sure you're li not like this. Not so limp. You know what I mean? Just, but look, feel my hand when I play this. Oh. See? So you need harmony to go with this. Down here, play these almost together, this little grace note, like that. Don't go dee da, but boom. so it's boom. Try it, try it down low, down low that way. Dum. No, but just go, put them all together almost. Just play them more closer together. Yeah, that was right. Do it, look. comes up, feel my wrist. So when you're down, you can really relax. She just is persistent until they get it, and she will just find a way to make them respond, to make them understand. One. She just has high standards and from the very beginning not only learning the notes and the fingering and the rhythm but really starting to put the musical details in early on so that they would come through you know in the performance. But these are the ones you're going to use, and that's not hard, huh? If you go, if you go, that's hard. That's really hard, but this isn't hard, not so hard. Okay. Listen, we have a guest coming right now who's going to play for us. Her name is Nikki, and I want you to totally listen to her and clap for her when she finishes, okay? No one performance was going to make or break you. Um, and, so, and then I thought that when I went to college, again, you don't have that, you don't have those consistent times to perform. Um, you know, you go to your jury, and that might be the, the biggest performance you've done all semester. You play in your perf performance classes. 
But she had a lot of recitals, a lot of different types of festivals, contests, and those kinds of things. And so, for instance, by the end of the year when we had to have our 10 pieces ready for the guild, we sort of already knew those pieces. We'd played them all year long. 10 pieces sounds like a lot, but it really wasn't. Um, so I think that she helped in terms of keeping the consistency going throughout the year with little performances, big performances. And so the cumulative effect was you sort of always felt prepared to play something. We're practicing performing. Let's talk about it. What do you do, first of all? Well, you Megan? You put your hands in your lap first, right? All of you did such a good job on that at the recital. I was so proud. And those of you who haven't played in the recital yet, then you be sure to do it next week, OK? And I want you to just write comments. You don't have to write long comments. But just like if you pick out one thing that they did really, really well, like phrasing was great, and one thing that you think they need to improve on, you could even number those. But put, be sure to put the good thing first. Megan, do you want to do bright red, or do you want to do the flamenco? Uh, bright red. Bright red. Oh, I'm stuck. What you do well? Oh, we didn't clap for her. I'm sorry. We didn't clap for her, and she was good. OK, sorry. What you do well, Christine? She did, had very good dynamics. Right, she had very good dynamics, Abby. Um, even eighth notes. Even eighth notes, yeah. She had even eighth notes. You know what that means? That's good. That's a good comment, yeah. Feet together, OK, and bow. Now, when you play for Federation, you will just sit at the piano while they write the comments, and then you'll bow at the very end, okay? I've had cases where, such as last year, I did the concerto competition, and then a month later had to do the Certificate of Merit evaluation and learn four songs in that month's time. She helped me by helping me space it out and learn the songs in the way that would help me memorize them the quickest and learn them so solidly before that evaluation. Fix the middle part. You know what that means, yeah. fix the middle? When you don't have those big accents. Okay? Fix the middle part. All right, anyway, so I think you've got lots to do. And next week, as I say, we'll figure out your guild pieces because the following Ten week is pieces. spring break. And then, well, you already have a lot of them. You know the keys, the various keys? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So she'll say that. And some judges say, okay, let me hear G flat. Now let me hear D flat. And then that's enough for them. If they think you do it well, then they skip the rest of it. But some of them just put the sheet up there and they say, okay, do your technique. And you're just supposed to go through it. Okay. I think 120. Nope, no less than 120. The only thing, um, Asher, I just, th this is great. This is good. This is the hardest part. You've got the top note here. But this, you need to lean your hand over. It's because it's a third. Yeah, your four needs to sound louder than your two. Try this. One, two, three. Once you've gone here, I wouldn't wouldn't be too heavy going on here. This. Uh, try it 
once more from the second part. One, two, three. You're just going to stand like this. And the big thing is to get your feet together. Everybody always tries to do it. And then just go down, up, slowly. Okay? Do it one more time for me now. Because I don't want you to look uncomfortable. You look great. You sound good. Get sit down first. I want to see if you can get to it. It's hard to do here because there's not very much room. Yeah. No, no. Hold it down. Down. And then up. Okay. Be sure you're standing that they see your face. Are you going to crack a little smile? Sure. Okay. <laughs> well, do it. Smile at me. <laughs> she always has... Um, two or three recitals. Every time she has a recital, that actually means that she's having recitals Monday night and Tuesday night. So if you would play on Monday night and not do your best, then she would bring you back on Tuesday night. She wouldn't wait six months so you could remember that huge memory slip you had. She would bring you back the very next night, and um, consequently, the second night would usually be a little bit longer than the first night <laughs> for recitals. Oh, is, did you draw this, Jen? Yeah, can we draw That's cute. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Everyone but her dad leaving for a recital. Her dad's mother was a piano teacher. <laughs> he can't face it. <laughs> She's going to play first on the program tonight, and we want to welcome you. And I uh, hope that everybody enjoys what's going on. I'm going to take some notes on my little pad of paper, I hope, as I go along. Okay? She has lots of recitals. Um, actually, a lot of recitals. Sometimes a couple in a week. And students would come and play. And um, it was very, a lot of fun. If you were at the Federation, the judge would be writing comments right now. And then you just wait until they say you're ready for your second piece. Okay? I heard the bug. <laughs> and I thought you just needed this practice, you know. Yeah. And your middle part was better. You're still going to work next year. Oh, but Wild Horseman went really well. I thought you did such a good job. Did you do well for Certificate of Merit? Uh, I think so. Did I you? Might have gone, I have gone. Okay. I might have done it, not done it as well as I did at a recital, but I did it pretty well. And I remember the first time I made it all the way through, I finished, you know, I was finally, we, we made it all the way through. And I looked up and she had tears in her eyes and I had tears in my eyes because, not because, well, you can always cry when you listen to Rachmaninoff second because it's beautiful music. But it wasn't just about that, it was about Ellen's 40 and she's doing this again. This is like what we used to do. This is who she is. This is who we are. It was about our relationship. <laughs> I feel the most important quality in being a teacher is to care. I think that is, if you have that quality, you can accomplish almost anything. And so I think that's the first thing that people notice about her when, when they observe her teach. Timmy, come here. This is Timmy. And Timmy is the only person that got what? What? In CM. Uh, 100. He got 100 on the test in CM. What's great is at that age, you know, in that young age, you have an adult that gives you this attention, full 100% attention for whatever amount of time. And it's a great confidence builder for a child. I think because we do see Mrs. Bastian more than once a week, that it's, it's a very important relationship. Very good. Well, good
luck. I think the guys are going to do a really good job. You've done a really good job. Oh! oh. Well, this year they've been practicing. She has all the qualities needed to be an outstanding teacher. She's extremely intelligent. She knows her subject inside out. Truly talented. But how many voices? What are the voices? Two. When you're thinking, Emily, when you're thinking of soprano, alto, alto, tenor, bass, how many voices does this have? Oh. Who said three? Okay, that's good. I really like piano lessons because you get to just learn how to do something. You can be a pianist when you you get better, bigger, and it could be your future. It can. I guess this is something that you could say about anybody who's a really important person in your life, but I feel like one of the wonderful things is that they care about what's going on in your life, not just with that particular aspect, not just in the musical aspect in this case. She's just this incredible lady, you know? She's just a really good teacher and really interested. At the pinnacle of it all, I think she just absolutely loves teaching and, and loves music, and so those two things combined, I think, are, are huge. Music is important for its own sake, <laughs> and that it's part of being human. And if, if that element of the arts is missing in children's lives, then they're, they're not fully human. I think that she um, cares so much about how the kids sound and how the kids feel as people. She gets to know each student really well. She tries to figure out what motivates that student. Um, oh, you I just bought, bought one. Oh, you just, bought, just bought one. one. So did everybody get what everybody wanted? Yeah. I have more pink poodles. I do because I hit the half price sale at the airport. Okay, everybody get your... I think anybody who's bold enough to, to play for her, uh, it's like a life-altering experience. You know? She says, teach every student as if he were your very best one. And that's always an inspiration to me. You play on everything? Yeah. Good. And you know when you oh. play? Okay. All right, good. Very good. Okay. That's great. Very good. See you.